Hello, everyone. Hi. I am Graham. And I'm Ashkan. And today's question is, what do you put in your newsletters? Good. Newsletters. So let's, let's start by saying, let's, let me start by saying that we, <laughs> <don't> have, <laughs> we have a separate newsletter list than just our, our full customer list, right? Yeah. So I, I just want to make that distinction up front before we start talking about other stuff, is that we're specifically sending newsletters at our place in our center to uh, people who've actively signed up to hear about us from our newsletter. We're not just blasting kind of all of our all of our email, our, uh, all the emails we have from our customers. Yep, and oftentimes double opting in as well, although I think that is right. changing now. MailChimp's kind of changing their structure a little bit to a single opt-in by default, which is interesting. Oh. Maybe for a different topic. Maybe for something that talks more about newsletters, we could discuss that. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so our opt-in people, um, which obviously is much smaller than your, than your full customer list in almost all cases. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, so what do, we, what do we include? I guess let's talk about frequency and let's talk about general length. Right. And then let's talk about what to include. Okay. So, like, every day is too frequent. You, should, you probably shouldn't be sending a newsletter every day. It's a little bit intense. And every other day is too seldom. <laughs> so you're looking at that sweet spot. like <laughs> One and a half days or so? <laughs> no, so I, I would say anything under anything more frequent than every month for something like a brick-and-mortar business feels way too often. Yeah, a little too intense. Like, you're probably going to overwhelm people or, or just not have enough interesting stuff to say. Yeah, and uh, like a month or longer feels to me like the, the right amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, three months for some reason. Like, I don't, I don't know if it's that we're, yeah, again, like a, a brick and mortar business people actually need to physically come into as opposed to a website where they get a newsletter and immediately they can go and get the new content from it or something. But yeah, for some reason, like three months feels, and maybe it's just because newsletters take so long to write. <laughs> and <then> once <laughs> every three months sounds way better than doing it every month. But that, that to me, one, one to three months has always felt a little bit like, if you want to have a really regular newsletter, that's what you're looking at. Mm-hmm. What about length? How long? How long are you sending things to people? How long? Um, I feel like usually it feels good to have about like three main points in your newsletter, like kind of three distinct topics. Is often what I find feels like substantial, and especially with the infrequency of of when they're going out, and that's maybe like a one or two paragraphs, like per per topic. Yeah, that's about what I was thinking. I was going to say the ability to read it and digest, or at least like, you know, um, read slash skim it and in like under five minutes uh-huh. and get all of the information out of it feels like the right amount of the right amount of time in there. Right. So I guess if you were to like, you know, type it out in kind of magazine pages, it's almost like a spread is your newsletter. Maybe a couple pages is, is what feels kind of right to me. Yeah. Uh, so... What the heck goes in that that you're that you're sending out? Um, I definitely have my list of favorites. I don't know if you if you prepped for this. I, I was up n- at night studying. <laughs> um, you know, I've got some I've got some things that I'm thinking about. All right, I'll I'll say one first, and you can say one. Okay, but I hope it's not mine. You only have one. Well, I got one that I'm excited about. <laughs> okay, you say yours first. All right. Like so, one one thing I think is great to include in there is any awesome, cool improvements you have going mm. on at your float center. That's good. That was not the one I was excited about. Okay, so. nice. Yeah, because that's always just great news like for everybody, right? Like your center's doing better. Your customer's experience is going to get better. Oftentimes with a float center, it's things that people might not even know or notice, right? Like, you know, it's... <laughs> we expanded our wall by yeah. six inches like and reduced sound like, by 20 more decibels. Heavy and... soundproofing is hard. You can, no one just walks in and goes like, oh, did you like do more soundproofing there? But like, you know, it's great stuff to talk about because it's like, hey, you're you're making people's float experiences quieter and and improving the the kind of service in that way, um, so that's those are always fun. If you have some kind of great upgrade that's happening in your float center, that's always one that I think is is definitely worth including. And another really good one is just other float news that has made it into the media. Uh-huh. I really enjoy, especially when there's a really high profile article or piece that's come out, like in Time Magazine or uh, on NPR or anything like that, is really cool to be able to link people back to and. 
uh, rather than being solely in charge of getting them excited about coming in and floating again. Now it's this broader culture at large is, is responsible for a little bit of their excitement, which always feels like a nice one to put in there. Yeah. And uh, what else? What else goes into a newsletter? Oh, I got I got plenty more. Yeah, I <laughs> have <laughs> two spreads full of information. <laughs> uh, customer stories. I love I love highlighting a customer or someone who's gotten a lot out of floating recently. Maybe one of your members or or something like that. And especially if they have a story where they got a lot out of floating. It, they they've been floating every week for the last three months, and it really affected their lives, or, or they were actually in a, a car accident and it helped them recover, or just those really profound stories that we get every single day, I think are great things to, to share around. We, uh, we do a lot of programs and things like that at our Float Center, too, and those are always like rich content for, for putting out. Um, you know, Almost anything cool you're doing within your community is a great thing to put in a newsletter because it's not just exciting about you, it's exciting that you're working within the community and cool things are being developed and you know any any outreach or community work or any of that stuff you're doing is I think some of the uh, you know most uplifting and nice things to read about when you when you read a newsletter. Yep, so that's that's kind of the idea behind some some prime examples of content, but the basic idea here is you know this is this shouldn't just be a pitch all about why to come in and float with you. If anything, it's it's a tangential pitch in my mind. What you're doing is uh, the same thing that any magazine does or that anything like a newspaper where you're going to it for content every day. You're just trying to provide content that people are entertained by and that they want to read. And hopefully that's exciting for them. And just that alone, just pe- getting people excited about floating and, and having them read inspiring or funny stories or uh, whether that be from floaters or in the news, those are the things that will make them come back in. Um, you know, oftentimes what you're trying to hit is not the people who are thinking about floating every week and actively deciding not to come into your shop. You're trying to get the people with your newsletter who floated a couple times or floated once and don't think about it often. And this newsletter is that thing where they're like, oh, yeah, floating. I'd kind of forgotten about it. And they're like, oh, that, that helps with PTSD. That's awesome. Or whatever it is, right? You're kind of feeding their dialogue and just giving them a little prod to remind them that floating's out there, A, and that you're out there as a specific place to float B. Yeah, so if you're, I mean, if you have some sort of specific deal or something like that, it really should be kind of tied into other things. Like, you shouldn't ideally just be sending emails out every month that are like, hey, you know, you should, like, 20 bucks off, like, just kind of those hard sales pitches or stuff like that, I think, tends to be less effective because you're really not providing a ton of interesting content or huge value to people as they as they read your newsletter. Yep, make it entertaining, make it educational, and just sort of trust the rest of the the magic to happen. Um, you definitely, like Ashkan said, don't need to pitch a deal every time. Cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, do we have a newsletter that they can sign up for? <laughs> <laughs> if if you want to sign up for a newsletter, <laughs> go to our site. It's uh, floathq.com. Actually, the uh, and the the Float Tank Solutions newsletter is a great example of that, or signing up for a blog for example. And, yeah. and by the way, the same exact lessons go for uh, making a blog that's coming out regularly for your center as, as with a newsletter. You know, that same educational, make it entertaining, share people's stories. Yeah, same idea. And if you want to sign up for us to answer a question, you like that segue? <laughs> that was a good one, huh? That was an okay one. <laughs> yeah. Then just go to floatanksolutions.com slash podcast. Type in your question. And we may just answer it. (laughs) All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one out there. Bye.